share with me what version of Outlook that you are using today. Do you agree with Microsoft's change with the strategy? You know right now that they are moving towards the new Outlook. I'm going to talk about that. So let's go and lead me into the next slide. Why would they not have a whole application without these missing features that we love from Classic? And what they had shared is one of the reasons why they're moving to the new Outlook is they had three versions of Outlook. You have the mail and calendar app that you down, download from the Microsoft Store. That's the free version. You also had the web version. I believe that it was rolled out in 2014. And then you have the classic that is 25 years old, right? Each one of them does something different. So put your business hat on if you are the owner of Microsoft, that you have three different teams maintaining these applications, right? So they wanted to move to something to one outlook. They want one outlook that is going to be flexible, scalable. It's going to be customizable. They're using a term that is going to be Outlook Hub for me right? They wanted to be able to allow you to customize it and work for you, regardless if you're using it for personal work or school. Think about it in this sense. We could be all three of those, right? We could be using it for our personal sense, our school, as well as um, work. So that is the why Microsoft decided to move forward. With them rolling out features here and features there, they did say, I don't want to forget, they did say they're going to take the best features out of each of these applications and make this grand outlook, right? But it's not going to happen overnight. With that, this is the timeline that they just shared with folks because they really have been really quiet for almost a year now. The first phase is called the opt-in. They're allowing users to actually opt in to use the new Outlook. They have their beta users, their preview users, and right now they're at the production. And when they say production, it's probably going out to that general availability. More people have, you know, are starting to see the toggle up in the left, right corner saying, try me. This is where they are. And they did share that they are at the halfway point before they what they call the disruptive change notice. And they did share that you know, when they go to each of these phase, they will communicate to you know, their clients, customers, and users. This is Teresa's talk, and I don't know Microsoft true plans, but I'm thinking that we'll start to see this in you know, the first or second quarter of next year. But the next phase is one day you're going to come in, you're going to turn on your computer, regardless if you have opt in or out before, you will have new Outlook. And what they're doing this time around, you're going to have new, new Outlook turned on by default with the option to go back to classic. So you'll still have the, the ability to go back and forth. And again, what they're going to do is they're going to roll it out to the beta users, then the preview users, and then production. During these phases, they want your feedback. They actually went on record by saying that they know they have to gain the trust from end users again, and, um, and they want you to hang in there and give them good feedback. I am a bronze contributor on Tech Community. Give them constructive feedback on how you use it, because I believe the squeaky wheel is what's going to get their attention. Right. So if you have a feature that you like and use daily, share that because the more people say, I need this feature, because for me, I'm missing the calendar board. I want the calendar board to come back. And I've given them that feedback. So they did say that when they reach the production stage, that they will give you a 12 month notice. They also said that, again, the feedback. And they will not go to the next stage 
until all gaps has been addressed. Because some people rely on, on Outlook for connect with other applications. And so they want to make sure all of that is working before they, before you have the new Outlook. New Outlook will be the Outlook that why not build it and then roll it out, right? Well, they used to do that years ago. But what was happening is then they will run into all these problems. Um, if you allow me to say, darned if they do, darned if they don't. And I wanted to mention that, you know, Microsoft has so it's over 400 million users globally for Outlook. 